the legendary, the one and only, my baby True. We're talking about Rolanda. Welcome, friends. It's the Keyboard Kingpin, and today I'm bringing you, as promised, Rolanda, my vintage Roland rack, circa 1979 to 1985. Nice classic vintage unit right here, made up of mostly analog Roland racks with two digital ones that are going to be pulled out and put into Rolanda D. That's going to be my digital rolling rack but that's another video for another time i want to thank everyone who's been liking and subscribing so far you guys really been inspiring me to keep stuff going so you know keyboard kingpin appreciate it without any further ado let's go ahead and get into rolanda let's go we're gonna go ahead and start from the bottom up tell you what she's made out of starting from the bottom up we have two seq 331 graphic equalizers we got one seq 315 graphic equalizer, two SIP-301 bass guitar preamps, one SBF-325 stereo flanger, one AMX-600 audio mixer, one SD-2500 digital delay, one SRV-2000 digital reverb, one RV-100 spring reverb, and a Boss DM300 analog delay unit. The Roland SEQ-331 is an analog one channel 31 band EQ with an all metal mountable chassis with that classic Roland 808 color scheme. A very unique sounding analog EQ with that 1 4th mono input and output or 1 XLR input and output. I like to use this to uh, eliminate or boost up certain frequencies. The SEQ-315 is a two-channel 15-band analog graphic equalizer that offers two mono channels or one stereo. This unit is similar in look and design as the SEQ-331. The combination of the SEQ-315 and the SEQ-331 gives me a lot of frequency controls as far as eliminating, raising, anything I kind of want to do there. The Roland SIP-301 bass preamp. These are excellent for sculpting bass tones. With the controllable compression and the three band EQ tone control, you can really fatten up bass lines or even make them a little bit thinner in certain spots if you need. This was made for bass guitar, but also sounds great with synths and drum machines. Then we have the heavyweight, the Roland SBF-325 stereo flanger with three different flanger modes, as well as a built-in chorus effect and two channels to create great stereo or mono flanger. There's a wide variety of control settings that can be adjusted also a built-in CV gate input for syncing up vintage synthesizers or gear running control voltage a true classic the best flanger I have in my studio by far now let's talk about the brains of the operation that of course would be the rare Roland AMX 600 not released in the US this is a 10 channel stereo or mono mixer with a nifty slide out mixing console box if you don't know anything about this rare unit and want to know more I suggest you watch my video I did on this unit click on the link right here to check that out the Roland SDE-2500 is a digital delay with MIDI and CV control great for creating unique digital delays and easily syncing them with a wide variety of Roland keyboards and drum machines. The Roland SRV-2000 is a classic digital reverb with MIDI, capable of simulating hall reverb, non-linear and linear reverbs of various styles, a must-have to throw on those 12-bit drum machines that sound so good with gated reverb. The Roland RV-100 is a classic spring reverb unit capable of dry signals or mixed signal outputs with two channels and one capable of stereo. This is great for vintage dub style mixes, however mine is basically just a tone buzzing drone right now. As of a week before filming this video, sadly mine stopped working and just started making a loud hum buzz sound. 
I plan to replace this soon, but not positive what unit will go there. The Boss DM-300 is a vintage analog delay, basically just a Roland DC-30 with Boss branding. With the large rotary knobs, I used to manipulate the repeat rates and intensity of the delays. Not quite as fun as a Roland SRE-555 tape delay, but still a great sounding analog echo for the price. Alright guys, so now we're going to check out a beat that I made with Rolanda using a Boss DR55 triggering a Roland Pro Mars for the bass. And then I layered on top with the Boss DR110 and the Boss DR220E drum. So all the first three original Boss drum machines as well as a Roland EP09 for some electric piano and a Saturn 09 for some strings. So check it out. Now one might ask, why make an effects rack out of late 70s and early 80s gear? Well, call it hot rodding. Man's yearned to soup up, trick out, and customize. If it was actually 1970s USA, maybe I'd be under a muscle car swapping out and upgrading parts. But in 2023, with me making beats since I was young, I've always had desires to have more physical gear. My passion for the TR-808 led me down the vintage Roland Road. Maybe I'm trying to fill a void in my studio where a rolling TR-8 away goes, but my pockets have prohibited it. That's okay, because like most of you watching this, you crave that OG 808 with the individual outs. And here's my thoughts. Once the TR-8 away does hit my studio, it's going to be a family affair. A vintage rolling TR-8 away color scheme reunion. All the gang reunited like an 80s Roland distributor showroom demo floor, unlocking a whole new level of analog early digital sounds lost for decades. But maybe I'm just a TR-808 D-riding fanboy that can't let the past go. Either way, I'm glad you guys came to this video and gave me your time. It is beyond appreciated, and please like and subscribe for more classic vintage gear demos and hot rodding with the all metal chassis, beautiful, big, juicy rack, Rolanda. I know you want to get your hands on that big rack. Keep an eye out for Rolanda Part 2, where I show you guys some more in depth demoing of instruments through Rolanda as well as another beat. Until we see you again, Keyboard Kingpin. Peace.